This video involves lots of blinking lights and sci-fi supercomputers. I'm just warning you in advance, it's not going to be strobing, but there are going to be lots of blinking points of light. And I shall show you those right now. Let us marvel for a moment at the intergalactic computation going on here. So the first of these circuit boards that was made was the 6x4 one here, the blue one. And it has 54 LEDs in it and 54 resistors. The next one that was made was the ridiculously over-the-top A4 one. Well, I thought it was ridiculously over-the-top. It has been beaten since. And the A4 uh, circuit board has 234 LEDs and 234 resistors on it. It's worth mentioning that, well, I'll show you. You can get both these circuit board files online for downloading yourself and getting them custom made. The hexagonal computer, the hexputer, was then evolved by evolution. And this one actually has very high LED density on its hexagonal frame of 271 LEDs. Fortunately, uh, Evolution supplies these PCBs in its Etsy website, which uh, has all the resistors soldered on in advance, so all you have to do is add the LEDs. And then there is the mouse pewter. You don't have to solder anything at all if you order this tiny little thing from mouse. This is 216 surface mount LEDs and 216 resistors. And... Uh, you, well, Mouse actually liked them so much, he ended up buying a pick-and-place machine to put all the LEDs on from, which is a good idea, because that would be very, very footry to solder. And, of course, on my live streams, uh, we often see these in the background, the live streams, uh, I often wear one of Mouse's badges, which is a tiny little supercomputer with just 12 LEDs, 3x4, just mincing away, doing the random stuff, and uh, creating endless shapes during the stream and the battery it takes a cr2032 cells and a, a cell will last for ages and it can just be pinned onto your clothing it's very neat so now that you have seen these oh another thing worth mentioning look how fast these are the standard flashing leds diffused always go for diffused leds because uh well except for the surface mount but diffuse for these ones because otherwise they can be quite ferocious if they're focused <clears throat> But these are the high-speed ones, and these are the much harder to get. The warm white and the, the orange are much harder to get low-speed ones. But I shall talk about those in a moment. In the meantime, let's return to the bench and uh, start making one of the hex pewters. So you might be thinking that there's some crazy complex Arduino stuff going on to create these endlessly morphing random patterns, and you'd be wrong. These are very simple designs. Excuse the sound of a storm outside. Single-sided board, single-sided board, single-sided board. These two are the only ones that have double-sided boards, just partly because a mouse added features in the back. He's got the USB connector now, and you can also vary the intensity of this one. You can turn it up and down, which is actually quite useful. But uh, I'll also feature how to control the intensity of these other ones in a simple way as well. So the circuitry in these is just a USB power supply, uh, and resistors and series of self-flashing LEDs, that is all. And it relies on the fact that the self-flashing LEDs have their own very simple oscillator inside that will gradually drift uh, away from the other ones in terms of frequency. So every LED will end up doing its own thing. And that gradual drift of frequencies uh, results in the complex morphing patterns that you see. And if it's too bright, I typically recommend 1K resistors, but you can also use 470 ohm resistors. If it's too bright, even with that in the background, you can add just standard one amp diodes in series. These things don't take much current, by the way. But you can add one or two or three, whatever you want, to gradually lower the voltage and bring the intensity of the whole panel down. And when you turn these on initially, well, let me demonstrate with the hex pewter. I shall turn it off and I shall turn it on. All the flashing LEDs light up in sync together because initially, well, that's probably one of the very few times, I mean, if you left it on 24-7 forever, it would sync up again at some point. But at power up, it's the only time you're likely to see them in as accurate a sync as this. And it's interesting watching the current because on an analog meter, you see it peak and drop and peak. And then as they gradually morph out of sync like this, it averages out right in the middle and then needle just wavers gently. It's a very consistent current. And it's only, you can have like an A4 panel like this running at just 100 milliamps at five volts and it looks great. It's a good, decent intensity. Right, so building one of these. One moment, please. I'm just going to clear the bench and bring on one of the circuit boards. So two of these PCBs are available 
as a file download on my website. I shall link it down below. It's worth mentioning my file is old fashioned HTTP and not HTTPS. I'll provide the links below, but uh, the, your browser may throw up that. This is an unsecure site. You know, you may be being hacked. That's, uh, it always does that thing. I really should make it HTTPS at some point, but you'll find two zip files there. Uh, Gallium and uh, A4 Gallium. The reason they're called Gallium uh, is because Originally, uh, it was a different project. It was just static LEDs, just random art. But I added the flashing LEDs just for fun to try them out, and it worked out really well. So both these files can be downloaded uh, as zip files of the Gerbers, the actual manufacturing files. Literally, you can go to your favorite printed circuit board manufacturer in China or wherever, and you can dump the zip file when it says upload your files, and it will should fill everything in for you. These ones, the big ones, the A4, are quite big and heavy, so it will cost a lot more than the smaller 6x4 ones. These ones are also a lot easier to build because there's less, less LEDs. There's an option of through-hole resistors, standard quarter-watt resistors, or you can use surface mount resistors in the back if you wish. I tend to use through-hole resistors just because I find that kind of easier for this type of project. The power supply for these, you've got an option of where you actually connect it. Uh, the power supply for these is a USB power supply. So all you do is cut a lead off, a USB, cut the connector off the end of a USB lead, and you strip the wires, and then you can terminate it onto it. If you want pre-built supercomputers, then Mouse sells these in Etsy. And I know I don't normally feature commercial products, but this isn't a commercial product as such. Uh, Mouse is a regular on the channel, as is Evolution. So this isn't a, a paid sponsorship as such. They have sent me these as sort of to play about with. But it's not a paid sponsorship, and it is just a cottage industry. It's Mouse is making these at home, as is Evolution, and putting it together, uh, the kits, and selling them on Etsy. So, cottage industry. You can also get the very, very trendy and very popular, I have to say, uh, little blinky badge from Mouse. Mini computer for that one, and mini supercomputer for this one. Evolution initially supplied them as, I think he hand-soldered the resistors in the back, but now he's been getting the circuit boards made with the resistors pre-soldered, I think, onto the back, which is good because that's a lot of work. So when you get one of these PCBs from Evolution, you will get the PCB. I don't know if he just does the PCBs on their own, but uh, you can get the PCB and he'll supply you the LED colour of your choice in that pack, if whatever he's actually got. These are the very desirable slow flashing LEDs. Can I demonstrate that with a battery right now? Slow flashing LEDs. Um, we've only found one supplier of these and their minimum order is 5,000 LEDs. So it works out quite expensive. And also I discovered the hard way that their customer service isn't very good when stuff goes missing. But Evolution is stocked up in these and he will supply small packs, the LEDs to match the circuit board. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually put a red board around the outside of this one just to give it a bit of a extra emphasis on the outside. Evolution has also created what they call the computer. I have to show you the computer now, don't I? Right, one moment, please. The computer, called a computer because it looks like a cube, and it has a little base in the bottom here that actually it's a 3D printed. I don't know if he, I don't know if he stocks computers as such. I'm not sure. I've not looked at his shop recently, but um, he may just make the file available for the base. I'm not really sure. Don't know. But it's a nice thing. This is what I've had in the background of the live videos recently, and it's just the three sections. It is a completely flat circuit board, but just standing up on its edge to give the cube effect. Right, tell you what, I am going to prepare this stuff and then we'll start making one of these hex pewters. So here's my preferred approach to this. Put the circuit board to the side, get the LEDs and start cropping them down in length. Now, the long lead denotes the positive, short lead de de denotes the negative. There's a flat on the negative side as well. And also, if you look through the side of the LED, you'll see the anvil with the chip in it for the LED chip, and that's the negative. So because I can see the anvil through the side, I tend to just basically crop these down to about just over a quarter of an inch, about five millimeters, just under a quarter of an inch, five millimeters, because it just means they're much easier to solder in, and then I'll crop them again afterwards. But this is quite a time-consuming process because there are 271 LEDs, and that does take some time. So I'll be back in one moment. 
The LEDs have all been cropped. It took 16 minutes and 54 seconds to measure out and crop those LEDs, which isn't too bad. And now comes placing them onto the circuit board. So I'm going to put a perimeter of red and then I'm going to fill it with the white LEDs. And once again, I'm going to clear the stopwatch for this. And I'm going to start timing it, but I'm not going to obviously record the whole thing because that would be very time consuming. Now on the circuit board, there are flats. The anvil side with the flat goes to that flat. I mean, it's not too hard to put these in, but they are quite densely packed. It doesn't leave much room for big fingers. So I shall start putting these in. And then I shall pause recording so that you aren't tortured by me putting these in over a long period of time. So I shall pause now. And when I come back, these should all be in and will be ready for soldering. The LEDs are in and that took roughly 24 minutes to put them in. Your time will vary. Some will be faster, some will be slower. Now I've got this in my frame here. I think this frame is made by a company called iCell. I put that label on to remind me of that. 240 by 260, but I'm not sure. Uh, they certainly seem to manufacture something similar. This one I've stored with things pressing down to the foam. That's not very good, but that's nothing compared to the fact that as I put this frame onto here and press it down, occasionally in the past, the circuit board has popped out and all the LEDs have explosively come out again. 24 minutes to put them in, one second to remove them all again. Okay, flip it over. And now... It's time to start soldering, so I shall start soldering. Let's bring in the stopwatch here. And again, I won't be making you watch the whole thing because that is going to be quite a lot of time. And I'm only going to be soldering one lead of each LED initially so that I can make sure they're all completely square before I continue. Uh, very time consuming. This would be like watching paint dry. Thankfully all the resistors are soldered on these. Okay, I shall pause momentarily until I have done this. That's all the positive connections soldered. I'm ready to take the circuit board out and see if any LEDs have been missed. They will instantly drop out. It took 15 minutes and 33 seconds to solder the positive connections of all these LEDs. Note that I'm a seasoned solderer. If you're uh, not so seasoned at soldering, it will take longer. It's not a race or anything like that. So the reason I'm including timings is just experimental. Um, the time it takes you is the time it takes you. You should enjoy it. It should be a relaxing experience. It might even span over several nights. If you connect, if you actually populate with LEDs, you could connect your 5 volt supply to it and you could just get sections of it as a time as you moved across. I do recommend sort of moving across as you go. I, th I already feel an LED that I've missed here. Yep, I have. I've completely missed that LED. No, I think I actually got a trace of solder on it. Right, tell you what, I shall add a spot. The very small pads, oh, that's my excuse. It's not an excuse, it's rubbish. Maybe I should use more appropriately sized solder iron. Right here. Now I'm going to look down the rows of LEDs and see if any are particularly wonky. Uh, as you look down them, if there are any that are particularly out of alignment, they will show. And you can look from a couple of directions. This is all looking pretty good. I'm also noting there are none sticking up to an undue level. So the next thing I do is start the timer again. And then I have to start soldering all the negative connections. So I shall do that right now. I'll be back in one moment. Soldering the negative connections is complete. And now it's time to crop the leads. It should be noted that the negative connections in this circuit board are all on a ground plane. It takes a lot longer to solder them because it takes a lot of heat away from the iron. So it took 30 minutes to uh, actually solder the negatives. But now it is time to crop all these little leads off. And this in its own right, I should actually start the timer, shouldn't I? I will start the timer. This will take a good length of time. So I'll be back in a moment once I've cropped all these leads off. The leads have now been cropped. It took approximately eight and a half minutes. So overall, it's roughly a one and a half to two hour build for if you're going straight into it and really plowing into it. But uh, you could spread that over several evenings if you wanted. I shall use 
add this lead to test it now. So this is a, a Poundland lead, but this one is a slightly more expensive version of the ones. Faster charging versus one amp. It's got slightly thicker cable in it. It's a better one. And I should use Andrew's super industrial scissors to cut this open. Thank you, Andrew, for sending these. Very useful. So I shall pop this lead out. I shall do what I normally do with these. I shall cut one end off. Oh, I hate these little paper labels they put on these standards labels. They're horrible. Let's cut that off as well. Because we have no standards. Yeah, it almost worked. If I, am I going to regret this? Am I going to regret this? Yes, right. Tell you what, that's it off. Excellent. Sticky labels. It's like the Christmas lights, you end up with a really massive label with loads of information on it. Okie dokie. Uh, I'm going to cut off one end of this lead. And before I strip it or anything, I'm going to slip a bit of heat shrink over it. Because as soon as you free the end of this uh, sort of woven sleeve, it gets a bit messy. So I shall slip that over. I shall then pull the sleeve back a bit. If I can, I shall hook the middle of the cable here and drag this back. Oh, there it is. It's going all fluffy. Mm, that's okay. It's fine. Now I shall experimentally, I don't know if this is going to work, pop this into here and see if it strips it without ripping all the cables. That kind of worked. And I shall keep the red and the black, but cut off the green and the white. Normally these ones are the correct polarity, which is quite nice, but uh, sometimes you get cables that it's the wrong polarity. Now I'm going to shuffle this down. And then I'm going to slide the heat shrink up. I should zoom in in this. So I'm going to slide the heat shrink up to the point it just takes all those frayed ends in. And uh, then I'll take the heat gun my little heat pen, or you could use a lighter if you wanted, or rub it at the back of the soldier iron, as has also been suggested, and something I've done myself in the past. But I'll shrink this on, that will just put a nice end to that uh, woven sleeve, which is quite nice, that's a silky coating on them. Now I shall very carefully strip these super thin wires. But next to get USB cables as super thick wires. It is much thicker copper in these, that's notable. And I shall tin them with the soldier iron. And before I connect it to the board, I shall check polarity. The reason for this is that sometimes you get uh, USB cables where black is positive and red is negative. Sometimes that happens. So do I have a USB power supply here? One moment. I do now. So I shall plug this in, then I shall grab a meter. The meter is buried under little mini supercomputers here. It is currently set to 200 volts, which is good enough. I'll set it to 20 volt. I shall put red to red and black to black, and if it displays a positive value, plus 5 volts, the polarity is correct. If it displays a negative value, it is not correct. It's displaying a positive value. That's perfect. That means the polarity is correct. So before I short these together and cause the power supply to lock out, I shall unplug it. And I shall flow some solder onto these two connection pads at the bottom here. I have not tested this yet. Hopefully everything's going to be working okay. Are there any hugely embarrassing solder joints on here? There is one slightly embarrassing solder joint over there. It's enormous. It's ridiculous. It's not now, it's looking pretty now. I've fixed it. So, I shall flow some soldier on to the other pad here. The ground pad, which is a mass of copper again. I shall put that lead there. And that lead there. And theoretically, if I have not put any LEDs in the wrong way around, or done other weird shit, uh, then this thing should work straight off the bat, will it? It doesn't always. It's very easy to put LEDs in the wrong way around. Oh, that looks all right, actually. Everything is lit. Nice. Okay, tell you what. Right, tell you what, I shall let this settle and then show you what it looks like in the dark. One moment, please. 
Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I like that. A nice result. It's a very deep red. It's kind of like 660 nanometer red, uh, which is at the complete opposite end of the spectrum from the blue. So that's a nice contrast. I can't believe we've got every single LED in the right way around. I don't see one that I've missed. It's always hard to tell when they're flashing. If you turn them off and on again, they all come on together and it lets you spot any that are out. But uh, that's a good result. That didn't take too long to put together and it's looking very smart. So I shall probably have that in the backdrop of uh, my next live stream. Because I like to have these in the backdrop of the live stream. Probably not very good for uh, bandwidth for like the data compression of the image and stuff like that. But I quite like the sort of feature of these things just churning them in the background. So there we have it. Uh, light coming back. Watch your eyes. And that is it. The Evolution Hex Pewter. So I shall provide links to the Evolution Hex Pewter and this other little... Uh, well, this one's the green version. This is a prototype version of uh, Mousy's uh, mini supercomputer. Let's plug that in as well. Oh, ferocious. Super green. Green is one of the brightest colours in this. It's quite nice. Look at the difference in speed. The, that is so subtle, but the, these ones flash at the normal speed, which just gives it that sort of chaotic look. But um, each has its own merits. I quite this is good in some situations when you want that swirling patterns. And this is nice and sort of like retro uh, when it's just stepping about randomly. But I would say that's a good result. And uh, I shall provide links to uh, the uh, Etsy pages if you want to buy a kit for the Hexputer or one of Mousy's pre-assembled computers or one of his little illuminated badges. And I'll also provide the links to the... Um, circuit boards so you can just basically download the files and build your own from scratch or incidentally if you want to use this as its original form just get a, a mixture of colors of leds preferably diffused and uh, put the resistors in then just scatch the leds in random colors and uh, th this is designed uh, to go into an a4 frame the smaller circuit board is designed to go into a six inch by four inch frame and they're designed to be used as sort of techno art and they look good as techno art. But that is the project complete. So um, I shall uh, upload this now after editing it and splicing it all together. And then I shall put those links in and release it.